Welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. It's nice to see your faces. Some faces and some have screens off, that's fine. And we've got like over 200 people signed up for this. So some are here, some are going to be listening to the recording. So hi, if you're listening to the recording. So uh, my name is Mary Kennedy. So nice to be here. Um, I always love these, you know, when I'm preparing for them, I always forget, or it always reminds me how much I love this work or sharing this work. So I'm just going to invite you in as in a great Irish way with the song. We had Jack Harrison just there, who's a good friend of mine, singing us in with um, Roisin Dove. But I'm just going to invite you in with a, a song for me. Um, and I'm going to sing the song of Amargan, which is kind of like my signature tune at this stage. So Amargan was the first poet to ever arrived in, in Ireland. He came with the Milesians, who were the Celts. Um, and so I'll just, uh, he, he sang a great song that lifted the mist off Ireland uh, as they approached. They were trying to, the Milesians were, were trying to invade. The Tui de Danon had put a, a, who were the, the god race of Ireland, had put a mist on the, on the island to stop them from coming in. And he he wrote, raised the mist with song and poetry. So sit back, let it into your bones. And this is a welcome into this call and into this campfire tonight, or, or maybe today if you're in a different part of the world. <clears throat> Am drupi mroti hong rain. Am china far kahil lakna. Am shki a far kahil lakin. Ki an tawar is an china chichim fireha. He on the winning snack knock, na flincha. He fits the galina, na ishka. He fits the gunrana grainya. So, Fulchus Ja, let us. From here, drop into a little meditation, just to, to allow ourselves to land whatever kind of time you've been experiencing in the last couple of hours, whether it's the full day or whether it's part of your day, just closing the eyes and allowing yourself to, to arrive. And one of the great, great wisdoms of the wheel is teaches us about transitions and how transitions take time. So rather than moving straight from whatever you've been doing into this call, we're just going to rest back and in, really invite that resting back in ourselves. That you, my intention is that you may be inspired by this. So, and you may receive some wisdom that ignites inside you as your path of the heroine. Just in this moment, take time, let's slow down, let's begin with, in a very feminine way of slow dropping, of resting back, of receiving. And the first thing that we want to receive is ourselves. So just check in with yourself. Can you receive yourself in this moment? Receiving the whatever's going on physically for you, the physical domain of your experience. What's here? As you transition into this call. Maybe if you named one or two things you notice about your physical body. This body that's so much part of nature, that is nature. With the ebbs and the flows. So what's here 
when you attend to your body with your attention. And can you welcome whatever you find, even if it's undesirable? And if you can't welcome it immediately, can you welcome the resistance to it? And then can you welcome your breath wherever you notice it most easily in your body? In whatever shape it's taking or rhythm or beat it's taking. Can you just allow yourself to open and receive this breath? And welcome it too into this call. And then see if you can welcome <clears throat> your thinking mind, that great thinking mind that sometimes, oftentimes, becomes the master. But can we just in this moment allow it to be exactly as it is? Welcoming it, receiving whatever thoughts are here. And each time you welcome parts of ourselves, we just land more into the moment. We land more into ourselves. And finally, just really inviting and receiving whatever mood you're in. So if you were to name the mood, just check in, see what is greets you. When you stop, when you close your eyes, you draw away from the screen into yourself. What greets you? And if it wasn't maybe a word, maybe it's a color, maybe it's a, a shape, or maybe it's a sensation more. Maybe it's heaviness, or maybe it's kind of blue, or an emoji. What would it be if it was an emoji? And just again, just opening to receive this, welcome it, this aspect of yourself right now as we gather around this virtual campfire, as what I, I consider this to be a virtual campfire, to really just welcome all of you yourself here before you open to this webinar, this workshop, open to other people on it. Just can you just let yourself land into yourself first? And if you're finding that really hard, can you just allow that, that that's okay too? So we're not looking for perfection or to achieve anything. We're just opening, 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 resting back. Dropping more into that feminine capacity that we have to receive ourselves. To be with what's here. To open to it all. And then slowly in your own time, just opening your eyes. Checking out the screen checking out who's here at the campfire with you and then opening to all that aren't here that are maybe that will join the recording they're here in the, the great field the energetic field so welcome so if you'd like to maybe just put into the chat if you feel like it what did you notice anything you know in particular that you want to presence what is true for you right now? And if you don't feel like putting it into the chat, that's fine too. But it'd be nice to hear, hear from you. So this is why I, I call this a webinar, but I call it a workshop webinar because I'm more interested in it being a little bit more interactive for you guys rather than just to broadcast to you, you know. But it's completely up to you guys. Yeah, it's so joyful. It's nice to see what, what's here in these crazy times. Deep compassion for all of me, gorgeous Karen. Siobhan, excited and ready for me time. Yay. 
tired, so you notice how tired the body is, Anna, and how much it's appreciating the heavy rain that started an hour ago. Lovely. I love that present thing of nature and of that context of how how that that gorgeous moisture can help us to kind of get more in touch with the body. Openness and intrigue, Chloe. It's a uh, hello everyone. Welcome. The good feeling of anticipation for what's to come. Lovely. Okay, so let me move. I'll just give you a sense of where, where we're going in the call. Um, so I am going to just do a little bit of teaching around and, and offering you those the three ways that I see the, the Celtic wheel can offer us a map for the heroine's journey. So within that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the heroine's journey. And then we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about silver branch perception, which is, I think, one of the greatest gifts that we get from the Celtic wheel and a true feminine gift. And then we'll do a little bit of personal inquiry. Some of you might have got some of the questions. And then we'll move into the rich, or we'll, sorry, we'll do questions at the end if anyone has any questions before, before we go into the personal inquiry. And then we'll go from the personal inquiry into the uh, ritual at the end to just, you know, we're, we're just oh, under two weeks away from Samhain, which is the new year in the Celtic tradition. And so we're closing a circle right now. We're moving from circle into a deepening spiral uh, of the next cycle, because the circle, of course, never ends. It just deepens all the time into a spiral. And so it, that's the, it's within that that we're going to do our, our little ritual. Um, and I really, I just really feel ritual is such an important part of, of us dropping into a new way of living and of, of birthing a new world. So any chance for me to do a ritual, I'm very, um, I always jump at it. So I'll be bringing you through that. Okay, so I'm just gonna start really with, um, what will I call it? Uh, my putting it, setting in context. So the first thing I really want to say is like this wisdom, I've been working with the wheel <clears throat> for, 12 years this is my, I'm going into my 12th year of um just let me pin spotlight myself for everyone so I'm I'm moving into this since for 12 years I'll be moving into the next spiral so it means I've been living the, the wheel for 12 years and it came to me as part of in a very dark place in my life it it arrived into me um and I started to work it, work with it, and it it gave me such ease and such um, a sense of meaning of all that I had gone through. So the previous five years, I had gone through a lot of loss, a lot of disruption in my life, and the wheel came in, and it was this. It was just like it. it I felt like it. This suddenly there was a map for a, a country or a territory that I I had, was completely lost in. And so from there, I, I was on a deep journey and I have been on that deep journey for 17 years, 18 years. And so the work, what I shared tonight is really comes from my own deep inquiry, my own work in that journey. And so from that place, I really want you to drop into your own sovereignty. No, just this is this is what I share, a very personal uh, body of work that I've you, I, I pull in lots of other influences into the wheel and slowly the wheel has offered me this framework in which I've built a body of work around and I just love sharing it with women because I, I so I, I really take that work from my own journey then I've been a coach a women's coach for the last 12 years um, and I, I really see patterns within us similar patterns universal patterns that we're all working with so I, I really that that has influenced and impacted this wheel. And then just to say that, like, there's so many ways of doing the Celtic wheel. You know, there's lots of different traditions. And mine, I come from an evolutionary uh, lens. The lens is very evolutionary and it's also an integral lens. So um, the work of Ken Wilbur, I don't know if anyone knows that that highly influences me. It's integral consciousness, um, which has an evolutionary lens. 
so that's really important. And then I also come from a mythic with a mythic lens. So I look at the Celtic wheel working a lot with myth too. So that's my approach. There's so many ways to approach it. So I would just say, as you listen, notice what, what really uh, resonates with you, touches you, notice what you maybe reject or you find kind of confusing and just let your own sovereignty decide what, you know, what, what are the bar parts that speak to you and what aren't, you know, this is, this is the great part of the Celtic tradition. The Celtic tradition teaches us, and I'll say a little bit more when I speak about um, silver branch perception, but we have been living in a, an era of patriarchal um, a system where basically, you know, we've been told what's right or wrong, good or bad. And what the great Celtic mythology teaches us is that we can find out our wisdom for ourselves. We don't have to be given tablets, you know, with the commandments on them or, um, you know, anything that tells us this is the way we must live. That actually it comes from deep inside once we, we live very deep in, in connection to our soul. But I'll speak a little bit more about that when I'm talking about silver branch perception, because that's one of the aspects of it. So let me start with, yeah, that, that piece is really important, but let me then just talk about where we are on the planet as I see it. And, and what is the heroine's journey? So we're in, in a time between worlds, really, as I see it. It's, it's a mythical time between worlds. It's like one world is dying. The world of patriarchy is dying, finally. And another world is being born. A lot of us, and most of, the, most of us, see this death, see how the structures are collapsing. But it's, it's not that easy to see often what is actually arising. The new world has actually been born as the old world dies. And within that, my sense is that women, and I mean, I think most people, but not, not just women, anybody uh, on the planet is, is being shook up and being asked to transform just because we're part of nature, just part of the, the great earth mother and everything is shifting. So we are also being asked to transform. And in that, I feel like we're really being, as women, being asked, we're, we're being maybe not asked, maybe dragged onto the heroine's journey. So that's the that's with it's within that context that I really want to talk about uh, how the wheel can, can is a map for that for us. So let me just share. I have a couple of slides that I thought you might be interested. You know, might be nice to just. I'm very visual, so I love. I'm, I'm much easier to put put up the maps and the visual. Um, images so that then you can really um, maybe it lands into me much easier so I'm going to share those with you how many people know the, about the Celtic wheel let me just go into gallery how many people know the Celtic wheel yeah and 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 how many people kind of know it well like know the all the seasons and the festivals and yeah so a couple of people know it yeah maybe so I'll I just I just want to get a sense so I can see if you want me to give you a quick run around so do you want to th give me thumbs up if you want a little quick run around quick kind of introduction okay let me do that then so we have eight festivals we've starting at Samhain we've got eight festivals but we have four seasons okay so we have Samhain which is in October the 31st it starts in the darkness and then we move winter solstice is mid winter okay so the next season starts at imbolc the mid mid spring is spring equinox then the next season summer starts at bialtana the summer solstice is mid summer lunasa brings the doorway into autumn autumn equinox is the autumn is the the mid autumn and we are hovering around here right now okay so we're just you know 2 weeks away from Samhain. We've got four um, festivals related to the sun, winter solstice, summer solstice, spring equinox, autumn equinox, like the four cardinal directions. 
in between each of those are the cross quarter days they're called Samhain, Imbolc, Bialtana, Lunasa. Our pre-Christian or pre-Celtic pre ancestors celebrated the solstices and equinoxes, it appears, because they built the, the mon monuments here in Ireland that we see, not just in Ireland, but um, so it, and they, those monuments were aligned to the sun on the solstices and equinoxes. So we as can assume that they celebrated those. The Celts, the, the cross border days were more important because they were they had were more agricultural, connected to the tribe and the land working together. So the cross border days, the beginning of each of the seasons, are were seem to be more important to the Celtic people. But they did absorb the uh, solstices and equinoxes in. Okay, so how can this be a map for us? Um, and I'll send you this uh, PDF after, you know, when after the, the webinar, so you don't have to worry about all that's on it. Um, so I just want to first really talk about, whoops, there we go. I want to talk about patriarch, the patriarchy and what it has left with us. So the patriarchy, I, I love the, um, what, what it is, what is patriarchy? The patriarchy is really a system of thinking or a system of living that privileges one man over other men. So straight man over gay man, black or white man over black man, um, this, rel this religion over that religion. This is, it's, this is really from, I'll read it actually probably better. It's from um, the great Carol Gilligan who this is her definition that I feel really explains to us what patriarchy is because if we're if we're going to be working with patriarchy then we're we're best to know what you know have a definition of it so an order of living that privileges some men over other men white over black fathers over sons this religion over that religion this caste over the others and all men over other women so if we're if we're moving from that which you know it's it's thought that patriarchy started in 3000 BC or and some people would say even before that but it, it seems to have come in with the advent of agriculture now it wasn't in Ireland it definitely didn't start then so what what we want to do is look at okay if, if this is now really been been collapsing around us how can we as women go on our heroine's journey, how can we do it in a way that really helps birth a new way, which isn't just the opposite of patriarchy, but actually something that's much more uh, inclusive and heals a lot of the splits. So in, in the patriarchal mind, we've like, if there's a privileging, a, a system of privileging, that means one thing is better than something else. So immediately any opposites, there's good or bad, like this is right, that's wrong. And, uh, and you know, women certainly were told, you are one down, we are one up. You're bad, we're good, you know? Um, and then that created within us the good women, the nice women, the angry women, the, you know, the, all those polarities. So we then even when we start our development journey when we look at okay i want to you know i want to develop i want to grow it actually we we think in terms of straight lines so one of the things that came from has come from patriarchy is this linear straight line thinking and it may have started you know over 5000 years ago but in the enlightenment period when you know we had science came to the fore that that made it even more straight line only what we can see anything that was invisible is not you know anything that we can't see or measure is 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 not privileged in any way it's one down so as a result when we're the our feminine was was banished the feminine was completely banished so the feminine is that part of us that is receptive well let me just preface this first feminine and masculine when I talk about them are not are beyond gender 
they're, they're forces. They are forces within us and within nature and within the cosmos of different forces that actually are in a dance with each other. But when we, when patriarchy, when we start, when we have, as we've grown up with that whole patriarchal mindset, it creates a split within us. So our masculine traits, our masculine mode, our masculine nature is privileged above the feminine. So it shows up in our lives, in our interior, it shows up in our relationships, it shows up in how we live our lives. And so when we go on the heroine's journey, we're, we're actually moving out of this linear, old linear way of being in the world, which has us all exhausted and tired and wired. And really, as I see it with women, particularly just in this massive voice of self-critic, a lot of that oppressor has actually been internalized within us. So when we go on the heroine's journey, it's about really reclaiming our buried feminine. That has not been, even in our more recent lineage, has never been, um, has never been expressed within us. So we have to go right back to prehistory to pick this up, really to, to pick it up. And, I, and within the Celtic tradition, <clears throat> there is a great, there's a great sense of honoring the feminine, okay? So let me just return to my slides. So what we're moving out of is out of this straight line. So even when we go, we think we're going on a developmental journey or, you know, a journey of um, growth, we, we think, and, and I'm a coach, this is what I, how I was taught. Oh, you're here and you want to get, be there. So how do we do it? So we just go in a straight line, you set goals and you achieve them. Or usually you're here, you want to be there. We set goals and actually we're setting ourselves up for failure. So part of one of the ways the Celtic wheel shows us is it's the first thing I, I discovered, or not the first thing, but really deep into my work with the Celtic Wheel, I realized, you know, that the hero's journey, which really is, it's a great depiction of the hero's journey, but I also think it were, it's time to evolve out of that. The hero's journey is still very straight line thinking, whereas the heroine's journey is like a labyrinth. As I've experienced it, as I as I witness other women that I work with experiencing it, and the, the Celtic wheel has taught me this, that actually the work of the feminine and the heroine's journey right now, the work of women, is to go on a journey that you know you might be really out here, far out here, and you think, oh my God, I'm I'm so far away, and this there's nothing is going right it's not going right and then suddenly you you realize if you're out here you could be really close to the center if you're in here you might be miles from the center you might have to go way out there to come back in but it's that circuitous really blinding journey that is not that it's the journey of descent because we're descending back into our bodies into our uh, in, intuition and uh, our, our wild nature, our primal nature, that's what we're doing is we're coming back to rewild ourselves, to reconnect with the depths of us. So it's a journey much more like this than just, you know, the straight line, you go here, you go into the darkness, you, you get the boom, you come back out and suddenly you're a hero. That is to me the old myth of either hero or heroine. To me, it's much more in order for us to, to be on the heroine's journey, it, we, we, we suddenly realize, oh my God, it's not a straight line. It's not even a circle. It's a labyrinth. Okay. So I don't know if that, let me just check and see, does that ring true for anybody here? Do you, you just like, oh my God, I thought I had so, I thought I got to this place. I thought I dealt with this. Here we are again. So that to me is, is labyrinthine because you're kind of lost in it. But I remember in my own journey, Marion Woodman, 
listening to Marion Woodman, the great Jungian analyst who influences a lot of my work. And she, she said, I remember hearing, she said, the feminine moves really slowly. So I remember like in these moments when I was on my knees and I would hear that voice or I would hear that those words, it's okay, you can trust this journey, the feminine moves really slowly. So that once we know, that's why maps to me are so important. Like once I know I'm in the labyrinth, like, okay, this isn't going to be straight lines. So I get walloped again or I hit another, you know, impasse. Can I just know that the fe it's, it's the feminine, it's, it's, it, it's awakening the feminine in me. So not to try and bulldoze my way through it or just get on with it or collapse, but rather that I can just surrender, just listen, just rest back, lean back. And then see what happens. And usually the new, another lane opens up. Yeah, Siobhan, two steps back is better than going forward all the time. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So, I mean, even feel inside yourself, like when we have maps, something inside us, I, I feel, or certainly inside me, just, just kind of relaxes a little. And it's like, oh, okay, I can be in this moment because I know this is a labyrinth rather than if I'm, if I'm thinking in straight lines only, or even in circles, like the wheel is a circle. But if I'm thinking in circles only or straight lines, there, there is something I'm leaving out that I'm, you know, that I'm not, that I'm, I'm trying to achieve, trying to get from this season to this season, to this season, to this season, to this season. When I have all those seasons done and I really nail them, then I'll be fabulous then my life will be sorted and you know I'll just have it all down well welcome to 2021 and the heroine's journey in my view so just again yeah it's it's so it's so for me such a relief for when I have a map I call them wisdom maps you know this is a great map that really helped me for a time but now I know th that's Joseph Campbell's map of the map of the hero's journey but now I know this is the map I'm on and the journey I'm on. There, I just want this. So the first way that this, the, the Celtic wheel is a map for us as women on this journey is that for six months, the first half, a full six months of the journey of the wheel from Samhain, at October 31st or no, up to, you know, first beginning of November, right up until the beginning of summer, the first of May or the first weeks in May, we are in the dark goddess, dark half of the year. It's called the Gamos, which means dark. It's lunar, we're in our yin. So everything we do on the wheel for that whole six months is we privilege the feminine. Like, to me, when I, when I had done the wheel quite a few times before I got that, I was like, oh my God, this is an amazing wheel. Or this is an amazing map. Because as we move through each of the festivals and each of the seasons of those two seasons, we honor what has never been honored in our society. Death, darkness, renewal, slowing down, hibernation, receptivity. So everything that nature is going through in that whole first half of the wheel is a withdrawing inwards. And our society, our, our contemporary society in particular, really privileges the always on, the bright half of the year. So again, it, it, this is where we get rewarded for being out in the world. You know, if you think of the bright half of the year, it's like, Things are going from blossom, from budding out into blossoming, out into shining, out into um, harvesting. So it's all about this, that, that whole sense of being outward, being out in the world, about consuming, about um, being recognized, about success. So all success is measured by the bright half. So the antidote to that and what our culture needs if we're going to birth a new world and a whole new era is 
that we learn these feminine practices. So it drops us into the deep intelligence of the feminine and it starts to allow us to, as we practice, we strengthen that part of us. So that's really for me, one of the key pieces is we give ourselves permission. It's what I hear so often in like by kind of women on the wheel kind of by the kind of as just coming out of new year it's like oh my god I don't want to even come into spring because I'm so enjoying this dropping back I'm just so enjoying not being in outward action not making new year's resolutions we don't make new year's resolutions at new year we 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 collect our fiery arrows we go into deep dream time from the winter solstice into Imbolc we enter dream time, which is a time to really drop into the soul, into connection with what is alive in our in the desires of our soul. What is our soul's blueprint? So we start to live from because we spend six months of the year of the cycle, the first full half, we learn to lead with the feminine and execute with the masculine. Instead, in our world, what we've been doing is leading leading with the masculine so that's one way oh they're all falling apart everything's coming now so i just wanted to quickly drop drop in here with this so this is how we live in our patriarchal world i see it a lot of us living where we live with a very we try to be here in the balance in balance balancing healthy feminine healthy masculine but actually what we tend to be doing is there oh we tend to be swinging from healthy unhealthy the excess hyper unhealthy feminine excess health hyper unhealthy masculine most of us i see that i the women i work with and myself this was where where I, I'm most of the time. I'm forcing, pushing, over-functioning, over-scheduled, controlling, burnt out, wired, tired, dried out, perfectionist. And then every now and again, I pendulum swing over here to the unhealthy feminine where I'm collapsed, exhausted. I just hide away from the world until I'm perfect again to go back out. And that's what I see. And really what the wheel teaches us is how to not be in a pendulum swing how to actually increase our range so we learn to increase the range of our healthy masculine and healthy feminine and actually we we become this beautiful dance which is much more like the infinity sign which is much more sustainable you know when we work when we move in straight lines of pendulum swinging we just it's not sustainable. We burn out when we move in a dance. So we know, oh, there's a time that I'm going to be open, receptive. And then there's a time I need to enact. I need to lean in. There's a time I need to lean out and rest. Okay. So that's the two halves of the year and how we work with them teach us how to really increase that range and what we're able to um how we're able to show up to different cir circumstances in our lives because we spend six months really in dropping into this and we learn that it's not we're not leading with the masculine we lead with the feminine which means we're deeply rooted to our soul to our authenticity we we are constantly listening for our our depths and we become the highest authority in our own lives we become more sovereign and from that place we execute and enact okay so that's that's one way that the wheel really offers us a, a map into this another way is that in the in the celtic tradition in the in celtic mythology we have, let me just go back to the map again, at Bialtana, at this point, 
when we've come through the whole feminine, the deep dark feminine, when we come to here, we we do a practice around sovereignty where where we hand over to the inner masculine. So we then move into bringing out what we have gestated in the six months from Samhain. And in that moment, in that festival of Bialtana, there is that connecting into the sovereign, our sovereign self and starting to lead from there. So in the Celtic mythology, the, the goddess of the land bestowed sovereignty on the king. And we are enacting that as we move through the wheel. So that's a huge part. The, 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 if the king stayed in alignment and honored the feminine, he would have a, and this is in, in the mythology, he would really experience a fertile and abundant uh, reign if he didn't honor the feminine, if he just went off on his own and didn't live in alignment to his, to his deeper truth or the truth of the land or, or really honor the land, then he, he would face wasteland and a time where his, the, his reign would not be successful and would there would be famine on the land. So there's, this is a beautiful time in the wheel when we can really work with everything that has been gestated, everything we've worked with. At Samhain, we let go. At winter solstice, we enter, enter the emptiness. In the emptiness, like in at the time of conception, in the womb and the dark womb, the seeds, we, we begin to receive the seeds the calling the whispers of our soul at Imbolc we choose these fiery arrows three fiery arrows that that we are our desires the, the soul desires that we want we're going to tend to like seeds and then at spring equinox we face our fears and our desires we bring the two polarities together and at Bialtana we step out and into the world and start to take risks in service to our fiery arrows so this is a whole period where we're not in the outward movement but at this moment we we move in the world from our deep sovereignty and we start to enact from there okay so that's another way in which we really honor the feminine and it it can help us the, the, just just journeying through the wheel, through the seasons, through the procession of the seasons, no, right through meeting at the point of Bialtana, really connecting and having that inner marriage of the feminine and masculine. The masculine principle becomes dominant at Bialtana, but it, it's, it's, it's only, it's dominant with the feminine always informing the masculine expression. Okay. So let me just pause and see if anyone has any questions or anything. If there is, let me check. You can put them in the chat if you'd like. The third way that the Celtic wheel is a map for the heroine's journey is this is the silver branch perception piece so silver branch perception is comes from the mythology of a story of Bran who is invited by a beautiful woman who hands him a silver branch with apples on it a silver branch and he's invited into the other world and there he travels into the other world, which in the Celtic tradition is often in, under the sea, travels and goes, visits a few, number of islands. And as he does that, he is, the other world is a place where you receive healing and wisdom and skills. And one of the, one of the gifts he, he receives is the gift of silver branch perception. And that is basically a deeper way of seeing the world so again going back to that patriarchal way of being in the world it's amazing how much it has us I, I'm still it still is is strong in all of us but and certainly in me it is and I have I notice when 
it, it's dissolving at times and then I, it gets strong again. But silver branch perception is this capacity where, you know, on the Celtic wheel, we go out and we do what's called Imrams because Bran did an Imram. It's called, it's a soul journey of discovery. And you go out and you don't use your strategic mind. You go out in nature with an inquiry and you take it out and you let nature inform you. And it's amazing what you see. It's incredible. So it's like we are dissolving this, this separation that we have. And there's this deeper, mysterious part of us that knows the unknown. And that's okay with not with not knowing that actually can trust the deep instinctual um, mysterious part of us. And it's hard to put words on silver branch perception. John Moriarty, the great mystic, Irish mystic, um, he talked a lot about it. Um, and, and he would say that it was, you know, the European mind, which he would call the kind of the very patriarchal mind, he called it the European mind. So we got too sophisticated and actually we lost this beautiful connection and a deeper way of knowing. And I think that's it's such a feminine thing. You know, it's funny, I do, I, I, it, it, I always move towards it now, you know, when, when I can't figure something out or I'm, kind of, it's, it's, you know, I'm hitting up against, um, if I, I just keep hitting up against, you know, what seem to be obstacles I just know it's time to move into the feminine and move into a different way of knowing and it's just to trust in that silver branch perception um that I, I it's it's incredible when you start to work with it and know that that is, we have access to it and it's deeply feminine because it comes from our depths and it's not a rational it's not linear it's not strategic it often goes against our strategic mind. But as we work, as we travel the wheel, every, si every spiral we do in the wheel and work with these seasons and this procession of the seasons, then we learn to trust more and more in this cyclical rhythm. And, and as we trust in the cyclical rhythm, we can be with our darkness. We can be with our dark times. We can be with times when things are not going our way. And as and what happens is you, we gain more and more wisdom and more and more trust in the, the cycles in and in that depth of knowing that actually is not on the surface at all. It takes us to move, to lean back into the feminine, to be in the back body, to receive. And we receive. I don't know where it's from. I'm not, I, I you know, who, who knows, but it's deeply mysterious and it is never... As when I've engaged with it and tuned to it, it has always both surprised me and um, delighted me in what it it offers me. But it's it's again, it's just a practice of working with these with nature and with the cycles. So those are the three ways that I feel at very top level. Um, the three ways that I really feel the wheel is a map for us, um, for us particularly women who are on the heroine's journey. I'm, I'm even thinking it's more like the queen's journey, to be honest, rather than the heroine. I think we're even evolving beyond the heroine. It's more a queen's journey, but that's just something that's with me right now I'm working with. So um, let's see. That's, I'm just throwing it out there as a possibility that maybe the heroine's journey needs to be evolved into the, the queen's journey, where our inner king and queen come together. And so I'll just finish with the wheel at, you know, at the center of the wheel is where we, we learn to stand because each of the festivals brings us energies, the ener different energies of the seasons. And usually what happens is we have a preference to, uh, for those, for one or two of those. But what we learn as we do the wheel over and over and drop into the cyclical wisdom is we learn to stand at the center and we know when to pick up each of the different energies. We know when to move into the energy of winter and when to move out. We know when to be in the energy and the joy of, of Lunasa, of, um, of the harvest, and when it's time to move out and move back in. So these are, these, are, these, these are really the ways that the wheel 
oh my god it's such a, a valuable map for that I have found for me um and I see it with the the women I work with too So let me hand over and see if there are any questions, if you have any questions about any of that or any questions about the, you know, the Celtic wheel uh, tribe or self-led. Here's, a, it's an opportunity now to ask those. You can just unmute yourself if you want, or you can put it in the, in the chat. Hi, Mary, I have a question. Sure. Can you hear me okay? I can. Yeah, I'm just curious about that, um, the sim symbology and the, the wheel part where we're coming into kind of gestation time and dark time and yin time. And I suppose m my life has been uh, up until now a uh, gestation time and I feel I'm about to give birth now and to kind of step into the yang visibility and doing. So I'm kind of like, oh, Oh no. <laughs> and there, there's an energy behind me now that I didn't have like several months ago. So I'm kind of curious to know how to navigate that, honoring the external seasons, but also the internal readiness or something within myself with uh, this uh, cre creation or birthing. Or uh, so, yeah, I'm just wondering would you have any? Yeah, I mean, I love the fact, two things. The first thing that it's, what I love is that you highlighted the fact that we're, you know, nature in the Northern Hemisphere is moving into the, the darker gestation period. And you at the same time are moving into the opposite, which is mm -hmm. like you feel the life force rising and that, that desire to move out or something inside you wants to move out. So mm -hmm. that can happen and it's really important. We don't need to align with the wheel with what's happening on in nature we're actually we're we just use that to to for to for us to really understand and get to know these energies but mm -hmm. it sounds like as you're saying there karen that it's like you are aware of something rising in you that is now mm -hmm. i've been in the darkness it's mm -hmm. now time to move out and it's that's a discernment that we that's really part of you know being sovereign it's like we learn the depths we learn to listen and then the discernment of when to move out or when to stay and mm. so your question is like how do I do it well if you were to work with the wheel and the energies of the wheel it's, it, you're at Bialtana that would mean oh I'm having a Bialtana moment or I'm in a Bialtana period and at Bialtana we work with like taking risks because if you think about a bud about to open into a flower into flower it actually has to expand so the the movement is expansion which means i have to actually expand my comfort zone so mm. my comfort zone is the bud it's like oh god and a lot of people at bialtana want to go back to Samhain. we just it's like no it's too scary uh, it's like mm. no so people fall off the wheel at Samhain or at bialtana a lot mm -hmm. and we revert back to Samhain. And that's fine. Sometimes that's how, that's why it's a labyrinth. It's not a straight line or a circle, but it's to just to really start to tend to that part of you that wants to grow, that wants to expand. And then there's always going to be the other part, which is fear, fear of that. It's like, because you're changing identity, you're shape shifting from what you were mm. into who you're going to be. And you're moving more into your soul's you know living out your dawn which is your soul's uh the poetry of your soul so that's it's it's a it's those are so two things i would say first is connect with the part of you that wants to take a risk and the part that doesn't and let them let them move and dance with each other don't deny either and then also the second part we work with at Bialtana is get get allies around you mm. we need our allies and we need allies who won't try and fix it for you or but who will just be with you and can really maybe help you birth this. I call them my creative doulas, people who kind of I get three or four women around and I say, OK, you're like my doulas I need, and I need to birth this. So can you be my creative doulas, my allies in this? So mm -hmm. it is birthing like you said it mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Work with that whole 
imagery of birthing and what do we need as women when we're birthing you know Mm, mm, mm. great yeah that's gorgeous yeah I love that idea of community of doulas and um yeah just the what you said about the leading with the feminine just came in very strongly of even though moving into an active maybe yang visibility outwards it's leading with the feminine which feels true for me so yeah yeah staying really connected all the Mm. time so even though you might be moving forward and with momentum it's like staying slow and stay connected until Mm -hmm. it's taken a shape that you know is really true to who you are or to your depths yeah great Great. good luck with this yeah (laughs) thanks karen thanks a million And I saw another question here. Uh, it recommends some books. Yeah, Dolores Whelan, my teacher, wrote a great book called Ever Ancient, Ever New. Um, you'll get it on her website, DoloresWhelan.com, I think. And uh, this, yeah, that's a great book for the wheel. There's another, there's a couple of them. There's Celtic Rituals, I think it's called. Um, Alexi, Alexa Con, Condrod. I don't know, maybe someone else knows I, I can send uh, send uh, the name of that I just can't remember his name off the top of my head um and let me see is there other books that I have here but I'll, I'll send a list when you know of books that you might be interested in uh with the recording okay love the explanation as a newbie and my oh I have to put on my glasses I just can't do it anymore without it oh that's so much better I'm wondering about the embodiment and body part of the experience of the wheel that's a great question Anna yeah so you know with being online it's um it's obviously you know it's very it can be feel very mental I mean I bring in sound I bring in a bit of embodiment in each of the calls and then there is a there are some there's some practices of embodiment through the wheel but it's not like it isn't as it isn't like we're in a retreat together you know in person but it is very much because the body is so much part of nature so our guide we're guided and the feminine is the body is the feminine you know so it's a really important part of it so thanks for that question Anna Okay, I think that's it for questions. Right, so let me, you're welcome. Uh, Okay, well, let's move into the, just a little bit of a personal inquiry. Oh, give us, oh, hang on, Cloda wants something. Around the times, yeah, the times of the calls, is it Cloda? Yeah, so the times of the calls, it's this time, seven o'clock Dublin time. Um, And the calls, as much as I can, are, well, the calls change depending on um, the festivals. I try and align them as close as I can to the festivals. The deep dives on Tribe are all on Monday evenings. So there are four of those. But the rest of them do vary a little bit uh, through the week week if you go onto the website you can actually download the schedule of calls <clears throat> and all the dates it's under tribe under the first little block in in tribe um you should be able to when you the list that says um what you receive okay all right are you ready for a little bit of instead of receiving all all of my words and uh, are you ready to just kind of touch in with your own interior now so let's set it up in we're moving from as i said that this wheel this cycle that's ending right now so we're in that phase of dissolve beginning to dissolve one spiral or one circle And we're moving into another circle, which will actually is a deepening spiral, as I said. So just to ask yourself one, a question as we come to endings, like the question is, 
if you consider, think back to your life last November, really the dark time, our, our world is between Samhain and winter solstice. In fact, I suspect it's winter solstice right now. So since last year, in October, just, just look back and consider, like, what is it that you want already? What are you wanting to preserve? What have you learned? If you think in terms of like insights and wisdom, or maybe something that's budding like you, Karen, like something that's budding or you want to preserve. So as we move out of one circle, out of one cycle, what are we bringing with us? So just think, what is it? Name one or two things. One thing is enough. What is it you want to preserve? Bring into the next circle. And then just write that down. And then at Samhain, which is really a great portal of transformation, what are you, what's dying? What's, what's ready to die? What is no longer serving you? Like last Samhain, I put into the Samhain at Cauldron an archetype that I've been living called the persecuted pilgrim. Great, I'll, you know, put the cross on my back and walk up the hill and keep walking up the hills and keep the cross on the back. So I put that in because that was not serving me anymore. So what is it that is dying or wants to die or no longer serves you? That goes into the cauldron at Samhain. And the cauldron at Samhain is the transforming cauldron. Like the fire, it transforms. You sacrifice it, you make it sacred that aspect of yourself or some maybe a circumstance you want to you're, you've done you're done with and it goes in to be transformed so just draw two circles. You can do it on one page or you can do it on two pages. And they just represent the old circle and the new circle. I'm not great at drawing circles, even if I work with the wheel all the time. So on top of the one of the circles, right, 2021, 20, 22, and on the other, 2022, 20, 23. So like that, 2021, 20, 22, and then I've the other circle, 2022, 20, 23. And in the, the circle 2022 20, 23, write in what you want to preserve. What is it you want to bring into that? Might be a word, it might be a couple of things. What you want to preserve. So anything that's, any wisdom you've learned, any insights, anything that's budding or growing. And then in the 2021, 22, what are, what are you leaving behind? Leave it here, leave it in this, because you're gonna use this at your Samhain, you're gonna burn this, okay? So this is the cycle that's ending. What are you leaving behind? Any 
And you can think in terms, you know, you can do this. You don't have to, you don't have to complete it tonight or today, but you can think in terms of like, how, what's alive inside me that's still keeping the patriarchy alive? You know, that's because that is, if, if, if we can leave that behind and we can burn it in the fires of Samhain, it means something new is going to be born, which is the new world being born through us. So that's another way of just asking the question, like, where am I still showing up with that patriarchal structures in me? You know, I have the tendency to push and force and be the perfectionist. And I know that more layers of that need to go in this this sour. You know, it's time. Um, because anyway, they're too painful now to be living with them. So. So those it's just you don't, as I say, just let this be an inquiry over the next two weeks that you can work with. Let's light our candle. I'm just going to light this. So this is, I I make the incense from from my winter solstice or your Christmas wreath. It usually has an evergreen, and when you dry it, it makes a really nice incense. You know, so things like that. That's silver branch perception. I didn't learn that in a book. But it just came to me when I started to inquire, I wonder what incense I could use that's more indigenous, you know? And then suddenly I was looking at my winter solstice wreath and it was like, oh my God, that's dried and it's lovely pine. And um, I don't know what else is in it, but it smells lovely. It doesn't burn brilliantly, but it burns enough. And that's the thing. If you work with the wheel, it'll, it'll give you the answers. We don't need to, it, it's here in the great, um in the great field you know so that's for me a real silver branch perception okay so as we like this we just the fire is the fire of transformation it's the masculine fire the feminine is the is the water and in the celtic tradition as i work with it it's i use water and fire as the two elements so they're used for purification and for um transformation so now I'm going to invite you to, on your left hand, which is your feminine, because you're leading with your feminine, from the outside, if you've got a pen or a marker, draw a spiral inwards. Because the feminine is the move inwards, which we're about to do. Okay, so I went from outside in. On my left hand, left side of the body is feminine your maternal lineage okay and then on your right hand you go from the inside because that's this is the first six months and then this is the second six months we go from the inside taking all that we have germinated on the inside all we've all our souls whispers and we start to expand them out this is where you are karen now going on the right which is the right is like you're stepping forward with your right foot, you're shaking hands, you're right, making deals. That's the masculine out in the world, that part of us. So now bringing them together, just really bringing them to the heart. You can just place them one on the heart, your left on the heart and your right on the belly. Just close your eyes. And just allow yourself to really drop into this moment in time and space. Exactly at this moment, everything that's behind you is your past. Everything that's in front of you is your future potential. From this moment. And just choosing to let go what needs to be let go of. Leave it in the past what's ready to die, what's not working, what's challenging you, creating a lot of edges, all of those things are asking, is the Kalyuk calling? And she's shaking you like she's shaking the trees now and saying, you let go now, let go. It's This no longer serves you. You, we need to, it, it is, 
it's time to birth something new, but first you must let go. So keeping that sense of what are you leaving behind you? What are you letting go of now? From you, from your lineage, from whatever is no longer serving you or serving the world. And then from that past behind you, what are you preserving? What are you taking forward into this next wheel, into the next cycle? See yourself embodying that, walking forward with whatever is budding, whatever you want to preserve with the wisdom you've learned, moving in a different way in the world. And so just right now, this ritual is to honor this transition, these next two weeks between now and Samhain, to allow ourselves to to stay with these in, this inquiry. From this moment until 31st of October or the 7th of November, which is the astrological zone, that you just commit to, by doing this ritual, you just commit to spending time with this inquiry so that you're ready to step onto the, the next cycle. And with your hands and your, your heart and your belly, inhaling up through the front of the spine. So this is a beautiful practice, a breath practice called the breath of seasons from Katona Yoga. Inhale up the front of the spine. Hold the breath at the top of the inhale. Exhale down the back of the spine. Hold the breath out at the end of the exhale. So inhale up the front of the spine, that spring rising, the energy rises. You hold at the top of the inhale, your body's full of breath. It's the fullness of summer. Exhale, let the breath fall down the back of the spine. As we move into autumn, the leaves falling like your breath. And then hold out for the emptiness of winter, the end of the breath. Inhale up the front of the spine. Spring rising, hold at the top of the inhale. Exhale, release down the back. All those leaves falling as we let go into the emptiness of winter, hold the breath out. Emptiness is where the insights come. We're just moving into this now. Inhale, up the front of the spine. Hold at the top of the inhale. The fullness of summer when everything is blossoming full exhale down the back of the spine all the way down the spine like the leaves falling and then hold out the breath at the emptiness of winter and then just let the breath find its own rhythm its own intelligence and know that you are nature know that you find yourself in these cycles and know that just stepping into the indigenous wisdom whatever it is it may not be from ireland that suits you maybe it's another indigenous wisdom but knowing that the indigenous the archaic mind knew knew how to work and honor these cycles and this is what we're all being really called back into this lost wisdom know that that is the great feminine that is roaring on our planet right now, demanding that we reconnect to her. And so bringing your hands together, your spirals together, again, <clears throat> and releasing, and then lighting your candle, if you have a candle. Oh, I see I've gone a little bit over time. Sorry about that. Lighting the candle just to bring illumination for the next two weeks between now and so on. So thank you, everybody. So nice to share a ritual with you and to share some of this wisdom that I feel is 
I'm so grateful for in my own life. I'll send you a couple of books. I'll send you the recording. And um, yeah, maybe I'll see you at the Samhain campfire and the wheel. And, and maybe I won't. But whatever, wh whatever you, however you choose to move through, just, just really tune into the beautiful energy of Samhain. Uh, it's there's so much you can so many ways you can do it so just my it's just a, the call to tune into that it's so beautiful enjoy the next two weeks and uh, yeah step into Samhain with great joy and knowing that we're here all the death is is actually needed the darkness is needed for the true birth of something beautiful and new that's coming and we're all part of it. Loads of love. We'll play out with a little tune to bring us out.